If I go back a few years, we all talked about these things called hard-to-abate sectors. Yes, it was great to have wind and solar and electric cars. They were cute and coming along well. But what were we going to do with shipping and industry and chemicals and agriculture and heat? Heat, heat, so much heat demand in the world economy and energy access. And what we now see is that hydrogen can play a role in at least four of those areas. And you see the policy support around the world, hydrogen strategies and huge amounts of money being dedicated. I've lived through five bubbles in my professional career, and I'm afraid to say I start to recognize the pattern. Olaf Scholz, German chancellor. Instead of the gas currently used for industry, heating and fuels, we will ensure hydrogen can be used, the gas of the future, and we will create a huge boom. I think hydrogen is ultimately the silver bullet. You can cut your hair with a Swiss army knife. And you can prune your trees with a Swiss army knife. And the reason you don't is that there's always something cheaper, safer, easier to use. And what you actually use a Swiss army knife for is the stuff that nothing else can do. In my case, opening a bottle of wine on a camping trip. And I get asked, Michael, why do you hate hydrogen? Let me tell you, I feel no hatred towards any element on the periodic table. Let's be completely clear. And there are reasons for optimism, great reasons for optimism. Experience curve will do for hydrogen, green hydrogen, what it did for solar, what it did for wind, and what it is doing for batteries. We're going to get cheap green hydrogen, this is the sort of Teletubbies view of the hydrogen future. Sadly, we live in the hydrogen present, which looks like that. Mostly gray from gas, next biggest is black from coal, and after that, a teeny bit of green. Gray hydrogen, black hydrogen, still growing. 94 million tons a year of the bad stuff. 6% of natural gas used to make hydrogen, 2% of coal. 830 megatons of emissions, 2.3% of global emissions from the energy system. Before we position hydrogen as the solution for climate change, we first have to deal with hydrogen as a problem in climate change. Just because you can do something with the hydrogen Swiss army knife, it doesn't mean you will, because you're in competition, not just with diesel, petrol, coal, gas. You're also in competition with other clean technologies. We will do as an economy whatever is cheapest and most convenient, and hopefully also clean. But just because we can do something that's elegant, that doesn't mean and that, that engineers like to work on, that's not enough. So we've got batteries, Costs, we all know, down 82% in 10 years, but also energy density up 80%. And the degradation rate, the cycles, the lifetime degradation rate has halved. You are in competition with electrification of everything. Up at the top, row A, the 94 megatons of bad stuff. Then you've got rungs, where hydrogen is a good solution and possibly the only solution, but in competition very often with bio-based solutions. But down at the bottom, DEFG, you're in competition with electrification. So up there, things we have to do with clean hydrogen, some things we might do with hydrogen, and then all the stuff that we read about in the mainstream papers. All of the stuff where the politicians get their hard hats on and their high vis and they go out and that is what we read about. We'll start with fuel cell cars. That's a fuel cell car and that's a battery car. Which one's easier to make? Which one's easier to maintain? Which one's going to be cheaper? You've got the cycle inefficiency of going electricity to hydrogen to electricity versus electricity to drive and see your grandmother. So when we see battery electric vehicles taking off 
and drawn to scale fuel cell vehicles that have been around just as long in the market, this is because the fuel cell vehicles are worse vehicles. Buses are going to go the same way. Montpellier gives us an example. I know there are examples of people very happy with their hydrogen buses. I was on the board of Transport for London. I couldn't get the management team to tell me how much they cost to maintain. Trucks, people say, ah, oh, that'll never work for heavy vehicles. Take a 40 ton truck, take out the engine, take out the gearbox, take out the differential, take out the fuel tank, take out the exhaust system, take out the vibration management stuff, put in some heavy batteries, and you end up with a slightly heavier vehicle. We could do aviation. This is a Boeing 747, 200 tons of fuel. You want to do it with hydrogen, fantastic, 73 tons of fuel, although, of course, the tanks will weigh five, six, seven, ten times that. But the big problem is the swept volume, a million liters of hydrogen to have the same energy content. Not going to happen. I don't care what Airbus says. Liquid ammonia doesn't work. If you're going to do liquid ammonia, you might as well do wood pellets. Forklift trucks, right? This is the big success story. Forklift trucks. Shall we do it? They've been on the market now for 12, 13 years. Invisible compared to electric. Where there are no plugs, hydrogen is a contender. Forests, construction sites, road grading, and so on. Maybe we'll do that with biofuels. It'd be pretty simple, frankly. But maybe we'll do it with hydrogen. Hydrogen boilers being promoted heavily in the UK. Right? They don't want to talk about the cost and the difficulty of switching 5,000 homes in five days, every single appliance, checking the pipes, etc., swapping out all the meat. They don't want to talk about that and how much that would cost. What they want to talk about is they call it keep the boiler, change the gas. Hey, that's a slogan we can get behind, right? But of course, heat pumps six times less electricity needed if you're talking green hydrogen versus a heat pump. There are no hydrogen boilers. Now, shipping, that's LNG. Chancellor Schultz went over to Canada and he said, we're going to import hydrogen from Canada. He didn't say we're going to import ammonia, he said we're going to import hydrogen. And that's an LNG carrier, QMAX. And this is the first ship for shipping hydrogen and it carries 0.2% as much. Okay, it's a trial. We could end up with one of those. That's a concept. The problem is, whilst hydrogen is energy dense gravimetrically, volumetrically, it isn't. This is like shipping expanded polystyrene. It's not going to happen. I'm sitting here in Rotterdam. I'm so sorry. You're not going to be importing hydrogen. Now, you might import ammonia, green ammonia, you almost certainly will, but it will be used in the chemicals industry. If you think any business, any value chain that goes electricity to hydrogen, to ammonia, to liquefying and shipping it, to expanding it, to then generating electricity with 22% cycle efficiency, and then the people using that are supposed to compete with the people using the electricity at the source country. Forget it.